Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. The topic of our discussion today is management of polyhydramnios. We have already discussed the causes, pathophysiology, complications, and diagnosis of polyhydramnios in our previous videos, which you can find in the links given in the i button in the top right corner of this video. Let us start from the management of mild polyhydramnios, in which we will talk about the frequency of antenatal visits in case of mild polyhydramnios. So first of all, manage the mild polyhydramnios on outpatient basis, but advise regular antenatal visits on weekly basis. So remember these two important points related to mild polyhydramnios. Then let us discuss the specific managements and follow-ups at each antenatal visit. First of all, inquire about maternal symptoms. Secondly, ask about fetal movements. Assess why there is excessive abdominal enlargement and Meyer symphysiofrontal height. Then assess the Liker volume clinically for checking the severity. Then auscultate fetal heart sound and assess the fetal well-being. Do obstetric ultrasound plus biophysical profile including amniotic fluid index. Meyer amniotic fluid index to assess the severity of polyhydramnios. Let us talk about the management of moderate to severe polyhydramnios. Keep a patient admitted. Treat maternal symptoms like mother may complain of dyspnea, dyspepsia, constipation, abdominal cramps, etc. We have to treat those symptoms. Next advice is that propped up position. Advise analgesia if required by the patient. Now, when is pharmacological management indicated in moderate to severe polyhydramnios? It is indicated when the maximum vertical pool is more than 15 centimeter or amniotic fluid index is more than 45 or there are severe maternal symptoms of polyhydramnios. In all these three cases, we have to advise the pharmacological management if required by the patient and if there are no other contraindications. And how to calculate the maximum vertical pool and amniotic fluid index? You can check uh, the diagnosis video in the I button in the top right corner of this video. Now the question arises, what pharmacological managements are indicated in moderate to severe polyhydramnios? For that we use the endomethacin, the prostaglandin synthetase inhibitor like ANSIDS. For example, endomethacin is indicated for moderate to severe polyhydramnios in the dose of 50 to 200 mg daily for 1 to 3 weeks. What are the side effects of endomethacin? It's very important to tell the patient about all the side effects of every drug which we prescribe to the patient. And the side effects of endomethacin include, first of all, the premature closure of ductus arteriosus. Secondly, renal failure may result from this ANSAID endomethacin. Thirdly, there might be ante necrotizing enterocolitis associated with endomethacin. There are risks of intracranial hemorrhage and cerebral vasoconstriction. Next comes the rules of serial amnio reduction. So when is serial amnio reduction indicated in moderate to severe polyhydramnios? It is indicated if maximum vertical pool is more than 15 cm or amniotic fluid index is more than 45 cm. And I have told you in the diagnosis video how to calculate these two uh, parameters like maximum vertical pool and amniotic fluid index by using ultrasound. Um, also, it is indicated when there are severe maternal symptoms of polyhydramnios like uh, constipation, dyspepsia, abdominal cramps, etc. So you can see that the indications are almost the same as uh, for the uh, uh, endomethacin. So how to perform the serial amnio reduction? It is performed under ultrasound guidance. Locate the cord and lymph-free pockets of amniotic fluid. Apply a local xylocaine over abdomen. Insert 20 to 22 gauge spinal needle via transabdominal route under aseptic technique in that cord or lymph-free pocket and start draining the amniotic fluid till amniotic fluid index or maximum vertical pool reaches the upper limit of normal. 
Then how to do the follow-up after serial amino reduction? We have to advise the daily FKCC and we have to do weekly uh, obstetrical result plus biophysical profile plus CTG and two weekly growth scans. And uh, what should be the timing of delivery in case of the polyhydramnios? Induction of the liver is advised at 38 weeks of gestation to prevent the unexplained interuterine death in case of polyhydramnios. So that was all about the management of polyhydramnios. I would like to complete my presentation with this code. Flow like water and you can find your way through any rock. Thank you so much. Wish you all the best. Allah Hafiz.